Real keen. Now, it used to be the case that if we wanted to be shocked by a violent or graphic video, we'd have to pay our money and take our seat for the latest horror movie at the local picture house. How deliberate and planned that now seems when contrasted to the images that went round the world in minutes of Gaddafi first being beaten and then a decaying corpse on display in a meat store. We'll discuss these issues in a moment with the acclaimed director David Cronenberg, who tomorrow collects a fellowship award at the British Film Institute. I don't like it here. Cronenberg has been famous throughout his career for making films exploring dystopian visions of the future, the impact of technology on the human experience, deviant behavior, subconscious desires, and extreme perversions. His 1996 film Crash shocked viewers and critics alike by exploring the sexual thrill of the car accident. Are you all right? She's a walking advertisement for the effectiveness of psychoanalysis. His latest film, A Dangerous Method, gets to the root of these preoccupations by looking at the originator of the idea of the subconscious, Sigmund Freud, and his relationship with Carl Jung. There's a rumor running around Vienna that you've taken one of your patients as a mistress. Cronenberg's interest in the human capacity for violence and the power of the image to shock has led to some of the more extreme cinematic images of our time. The issue of representing horrifying images of violence on screen has arisen again recently when photographs and footage of the dead, bloodied Gaddafi taken on mobile phones were sent around the world within minutes. But what's the effect of our exposure to such violent images, whether in films or in real life? Are we becoming unshockable? And if so, does it matter? And David Cronenberg is here now. What did you think when you saw those images of Gaddafi? Um, what surprised me was that Gaddafi, who was never a favorite of mine, uh, I was suddenly feeling quite sorry for him. I felt huge empathy, and, uh, and it, it was quite striking to me that I felt that way. Uh, it surprised me. And I think it's because at that moment he had been stripped of all context and he was a human being who was suffering and being, uh, you know, assaulted. Do you think that the instant availability of that sort of footage, and it is now instantly available, and we didn't show most of it there, yeah. and it's pretty horrific. Yep. Um, do you think it affects us? How does it affect us? Well, as I say, you, you can make a case for it uh, uh, enhancing our sense of empathy for people. You know, I mean, it, it's easy to say, oh, we're, we're being desensitized because we see a lot of it. But I, I don't really think that's the function. You know, that's something that's been mentioned to me because my earlier films were all horror films, and people would say, well, do your films desensitize people? And I, I, I think not, because I think people... Uh, really understand there's a difference when you're seeing a fictional context. Absolutely. They yeah. understand the artifice involved yes. in cinema. Yes. But that is not artifice. It's not artifice, and it, it, it draws forth a completely different uh, reaction, I think, from us. I mean, I remember looking up uh, on the Internet and watching a beheading. Uh, and, and it was... I wish I hadn't seen it. I mean, it was so Why disturbing. Why did you do it? You know, I felt I needed to confront the reality of, of what was going on. I but mean, you didn't it, need to. What, and what really disturbed me about it was that the perpetrators of this beheading were incredibly self righteous. I mean, you could mm -hmm. see that they felt that they were doing a wonderful, sacred, holy thing, whereas on the human level, it, it was absolutely hideous. But you were drawn to it. I wasn't, no, I, was, I mean, I, I actually had to compel myself to, to watch it uh, almost. Uh, feeling that I needed to uh, confront what was going on in the world at the time. I've never watched another one. Why did you feel that you needed to confront it? Um, because you read about it, but no, no d written description can really deliver to you the, the full texture of it. But you know exactly what happens just from the word beheading. You know what happens when someone's beheaded. You don't. You don't. Yes, well, no, no, no. I because you, you no, know no, because that their you head think, is cut off and they're dead. Uh -huh. and it's a horrible but, thing to do to someone. But, you know, when you think of the guillotine and you think, mm. oh, you've seen this in movies, you've never mm. seen it because mm. there was no film at the time of the, of the French Revolution, the guillotine comes down, shunk, and a head falls off. And we've seen it reproduced in movies. But, no, this, this beheading was, took ages. It took 
a half an hour and it was agonizing and it was like it wasn't even like a slaughterhouse which is much more efficient it was a ritual uh, full of self-righteousness and 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 to that extent I'm glad I saw it because I you you what it what does it make you do it really makes you hate the people who perpetrated it why are you drawn to or have you been drawn to mm. fictional violence mm. in your films yeah I, I haven't I don't think that I've been drawn to it uh, more than uh, v verbal violence, let's say. I mean, my latest movie, uh, History of Violence, uh, my, my, I did a movie called A History of Violence, but I've now done one called The Most Dangerous Method, which is not about violence, it's about the birth of psychoanalysis. Uh, certainly those things are connected. But uh, as George Bernard Shaw said, <clears throat> conflict is the essence of drama. Now, it doesn't always have to be physical yeah. complex, uh, conflict, but if you are a dramatist, you are drawn to conflict but, as, as, a, as, an art, as part of your art. But movies, the most controversially uh, crash, of course, yeah. these are movies about extreme human behavior. Yes, uh, and I think, in fact, uh, Freud... Why does it interest you? Well, Freud was attacked uh, because of his insistence on the reality of uh, the possibility of, of, you know, creatures from the id, uh, monsters of violence. Um, he, he, when he was proposing the unconscious, it was at a time when everybody felt that, that man was evolving into a wonderful, super-civilized, uh, controlled... You, 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 is this because you're anxious about the human potentiality for that sort of behavior? Um, well, seeing things like the Gaddafi footage certainly can make you anxious, but and, and I, I mean you'd be strange if you if it didn't. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it's not so much anxiety as curiosity. I mean, really, or a desire to know. I mean, it's it's uh, an artist and a psychoanalyst. I think they do the same thing. They they don't accept the the official version of reality. They want to dive underneath that and see what's really going on. And and some of it is very dark, and and some of it is very Mm, not just dark, but, but unusual and curious and surprising. So I, I think it's curiosity more than anything else. David Cronenberg, thank you and congratulations on your uh, fellowship. Thank you. Uh, well, that's it uh, for now. Uh, more tomorrow, but until then, good night.